Good morning. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. 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 Anybody else still tired from Friday night? The power went out. I lost connection to the internet. And somehow I survived. Anyway. We live in interesting times, don't we? Society tells us that a man can't just be a man and a woman can't just be a woman. I fear something has gone wrong. God made us unique and complementary to each other. Too many people want to create a world in which a man that displays any amount of masculinity is seen as toxic and therefore hates women. And a woman who wants children is seen as denying all women a concept of fulfillment and success. These are lies of the devil. A man is designed by God to be masculine, and a woman is designed by God to be feminine. Isn't it that simple? Am I missing something? That doesn't mean that a man has to be a vulgar, caveman type of person, or a woman has to be a meek, shy creature. You don't have to be a man to be strong. The strongest person I know is not a man, but a woman. I'm thinking of my wife. I don't know that I could have endured many of the things that she has. I am truly amazed at this person and thank God daily, every morning and every night for the blessing of her. And think about the church and how women have shouldered the burden of so much of what makes it function and grow. It is women who have championed so many of the successes of the church. It was a woman that was chosen to bring Jesus Christ to the earth. It is women who continue to serve in every facet of the church, and I think it is women who will guarantee its survival. By the same token, we should be ready and willing to push back on society and stand up. Stand up. We need to stand up and say what is right and denounce what is wrong. Amen? God won't send us out to battle without preparing and equipping us. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 18, we read, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Take a stand. And if you forget the word, Think of the acronym, Satan tempts and never delivers. Stand. Isn't it great that God gives us the strength for the battle? Isn't it evidence of an awesome God that he has such confidence in us that he tells us to just ask and it shall be done? That, my friends, is not weakness. It is strength. This strength helps us to stand and fight the fight. This strength protects us in the fight. This strength will see us through the fight. 
This is also an opportunity to put ourselves to the test. Don't be scared, it's not a bad thing, for it is when we succeed that we help put fear in Satan. Let's do our part to make him whine and whimper. We can also take a stand in our personal lives and how we deal with those in our society who want to silence us, to cower us, to minimize us. We have an opportunity to renew our vows to God to praise his name throughout all the world. That includes in our own homes. Amen. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, it reads, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. What a testament of our faith to unequivocally, without reservation or question, step forward to proudly tell the world that we will not bow. We will not kneel Amen. before it, but rather we will make it clear here and now and for all time that we follow the Son of God. Amen. 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 Today's Father's Day, a day when we honor those among us that not only help provide for our children, but are also a key and integral part of what paves the way for our children to be successful in life. Just look at what's going on in our towns and cities these days. Rampant crime, violence, and disrespect for other people and their property. How much of that do you think can be attributed to an absence of fathers in young people's lives? I, for one, think it's a high contributing factor. Think back to when we were kids. When I was a kid, if I got into trouble, and I don't want to bust any bubbles here, but I did act up once or twice or maybe a hundred times. It seems like nowadays, if a kid gets into trouble in school, many parents will immediately accuse the school of doing something wrong. It can be that their little angel did anything wrong. Bad parenting, I think, and I suspect in many cases, a strong father figure is absent. Do you remember mimeograph machines? Can you still remember the smell of those pages? One of my experiences in grade school involved the test master sheets that the teachers would type up in order to reproduce on the mimeograph machines. Remember those that stand there and turn and turn and turn? Well, after the copies were made, the teacher would just throw out the masters in the trash. Well, it seems like someone would go at night and take the discarded masters out of the school garbage bin. Then this unnamed person would make handwritten copies of the test and sell them to his or her friends for 25 cents a pop. When I, when I, I mean he, or she, got caught, his father had the kid wash and scrub out the school garbage bin once a week for a month. The message was received very clearly. God calls for parents and children to love and respect each other. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 4, we read, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. <laughs> Fathers, do not exasperate your children. I'm struggling with that one. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. 
How can we expect a child or adult to respect another if they don't have respect for themselves? Something so elusive yet so simple. This is where a father can be absolutely crucial, crucial in helping guide a child to adulthood. A strong, positive male influence is an absolute blessing for a family. Obviously, this doesn't always happen. And what about when a child does make a mistake in life? Remember the story of the prodigal son? Luke chapter 15, verses 20 through 24. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. After all this son did, all the wasted time where he could have basked in the love and adoration of a strong father, did his father yell at him? or banish him from the home? No, he embraced him and threw a party, a party. This, my brothers and sisters, was a man who loved his child and could see past what his child had done. Isn't this what God continually has done for all mankind? All those times we sinned against him. And he, as our Heavenly Father, not only continued to love us, but continued to bless us. He blessed us so we could take that blessing and spread it throughout the earth. I read an interesting article in the paper this morning, and one of the comments was from a, a lady who she said, how can I... How can I not love, how can I love my brother and sister who I can see, but not love a God who I can't, and vice versa? It goes both ways. How can I love a God I can't see and not love my brothers and sisters that I can see? We are called to love each other. God gives us courage as well as strength to see us through the fight. We don't have to be afraid. The enemy only has the power over us that we allow him to have. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 29 through 31, reads, Then I said to you, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way you went until you reached this place. As I started out with, today is Father's Day. Let us, when we leave this building, remember this day and honor the concept of what God intends a good father to be. Someone who loves his family, helps defend them from the evils of society and our culture, and is a partner in leading children on a godly path. What better job can there be? So let's remember to stand for what we know is right. Stand for what we know is true. Stand for the victory in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen.